Hey everybody, Chris Thunder Laser. Uh, today in this video, what we're gonna cover is getting the Thunderbolt plugged in, testing out all of its accesses and the power up sequences, and discuss how you're gonna connect it to your computer. Uh, whether you're going to do ethernet and USB, how you're going to run the camera system. So join me for the next eight minutes and uh, let's discuss some of these things so we can get you up and started and connected to your computer and start making stuff. Um, one of the first things we're going to do is out of our tool bag, we want to grab our blue ended power cable and really cool feature on our machines uh, to try to make sure that it is secure and in there. Uh, it is a turn twist lock, uh, which is pretty neat. And I'm going to turn this around a little bit so that you can see. But our power cable goes right in here, so blue to blue, fairly simple. And what we're gonna do is just slide it in. There's two notches on the actual plug. They're going to fit into the two notches on the receptacle. Push it in. Once it clicks, you're good to go. And then we would just plug it in. This is a 15 amp dedicated machine. Uh, the reason for it being 15 amp dedicated we want this to have its own power source, not, not, it, not influenced by other issues uh, like AC turning on or your water heater turning on. Uh, those can affect your engravings and your cuts. So if we can have a dedicated circuit where it is pulling from its own power source off of your uh, breaker panel, that is the best scenario. So this is good. I'm gonna plug this in. And now we should have power and Kind of like I mentioned in your unboxing video with the foam and everything on top of this, plus moving it, more than likely your e-stop, your electric uh, emergency stop button is probably pushed down and you're gonna go to turn it on and you may not be able to move anything. So let's turn it on and let's find out exactly what the um, repercussions of having this pushed down are. Turn it on. Fires up, we have a nice beautiful logo down there, lit up. But that's all that we're going to get. We're gonna get some lights, we're gonna get some beeps, and the controller knows, the controller knows that the emergency button is on, so it will warn you that this is happening. So the next thing that we do is we turn it on, And now it's going to go through a small procedure to home itself to the back of the machine and find out where it is. It wants to know where on the X and Y axis it is. So these are all part of the, the starting up processes. Uh, it does want you to confirm. And the reason for that is to make sure that you didn't leave a cup in there the day before um, or, or something else that is tall. And as it's going to go home, and find out where it's located on the table that you end up hitting something. So there are some precautions built in to protect the machine. Once it does go to the back and check itself, normally it will return to wherever your origin is set to. Um, for this though, uh, since it is brand new, we haven't run anything on it yet it's going to stay in its zero, zero position, which is in the back left-hand corner. So one of the things that we're gonna to wanna to do before we even hook up our computer is go through the motions of the Z table and the X and Y axis and make sure everything is moving correctly. All of our sensors, like our end stop sensors, where it's triggering our machine to stop. It doesn't go past where it's supposed to go. It won't run into the side rails. Uh, make sure all of those things, you know, it did just travel in the back of a truck, maybe on a boat or airplane to get here. So make sure none of those pieces vibrated. So using my controller, uh, which I can zoom you in on, so using my controller, I have my up, down, left, right, so my X and Y controls. I'm going to go through and, and just hold it down until it stops. 
and there should be no grinding, there should be no hitting of the, the rail system or the body of the machine because it has two fail safes, it does have our mechanical sensors and it has uh, software sensors built in, limitations. And as well as the Z table. Now, if you notice here, we have a message. The Z axis uh, has hit the hard limit protection. That means it's gone as far down as it's possibly going to go. We can cancel that out. And now we can test it by bringing it back up. And we're gonna go through this entire panel, but it's a great idea when you first get it to run through all of the motions of the machine to make sure everything has arrived in perfect order. Okay, so we've powered up the machine, we've moved the gantry and the X and Y axis, we've tested out the Z axis. Now we wanna get it connected to the computer, we wanna use this machine. And at this point we have to decide, do we want to use ethernet cable? And this is something that on the tech side we highly recommend. The ethernet cable is faster, it is a more reliable connection. Uh, but the only issue with this is that it is a manual setup, meaning that the computer has an IP address and now we have to have the machine and Lightburn have an IP address that will communicate to the machine. So Ethernet cable, there is an Ethernet um, plug right here, just like a telephone line, just kind of plug it in and you're good to go. Now, most computers nowadays do not have an ethernet connection. You'll have to buy an adapter for a USB-C connection. Um, once you've done that, you can go ahead and click the QR code off of our uh, startup page and follow the directions on there and that'll help you get up, uh, the internet set up successfully. Now, if you want to use ethernet and you also want to use the built-in camera, you will have to have two cables running to your computer. You'll have to have your communication line, which is your um, ethernet, and then you'll also have to have a USB cable. The USB cable, there is a powered hub in here that communicates to the controller and to the camera. So to grab that, um, that communication feed for the camera, you'll have to use both USB and ethernet. Now, if you choose, and for Mac users, uh, we prefer that you use this method. It is much more reliable with the USB drivers and some of the complicating factors Mac have with communicating with this. Um, so you would have to run two cables and keep that in mind. But if you're running a PC and you want to run the USB, um, this USB is going to transfer both all of your communication for your projects and the communication for the camera in one cable. Everything else is taken care of behind the scenes here. So this, uh, it is a square on the bottom and kind of a U-shaped up top. Just make sure you have that correctly turned so you can plug it in and then this would go to your PC. Now keep in mind, once again, just have to reiterate, if you're running ethernet and you wanna also use the camera, you will need the USB and the ethernet cable. If you are running a PC and only want to use the PC connection via USB, then this will run both your camera and your communications to the laser. Let's follow our QR codes and get Lightburn installed and communications to the machine and we'll pick back up with another lesson.